was a few years ago when I made the leap into entrepreneurship. I wasn't exactly unhappy. I was working at a job I enjoyed, doing software development, but the work itself wasn't that fulfilling, and I felt like I was doing a lot of it. I had saved up enough money to support myself for a while, and I had a couple interesting business ideas I wanted to try, so I quit my job and I got started working on something that could be mine and that I could be passionate about. Striking out on your own is an American dream. We all want the flexibility to do work we enjoy in a way that we want. But the way we're working isn't really allowing us to do that, which is why there's a trend of more of us becoming entrepreneurs. In fact, according to the Freelancers Union, 30% of Americans were independent workers in 2010. And by 2020, that number is supposed to go up to 40%. 40% is a lot of people. If we're moving into working in a way where we can take better care of ourselves and get more out of life that we enjoy, if 40% of us are all doing that, that could be a game changer at the societal level. But if you're already an entrepreneur, maybe you've felt a little bit of the other way it could go. Stress 24-7, can't remember the last meal you cooked for yourself, much less your last vacation, because paid time off is a thing of the past. I've been in this dark place too, and I can imagine what it would be like if 40% of us are all in this same boat. Less happy, less healthy, Things would be falling apart, and we wouldn't even have the time to get together and commiserate about it. We can't let this happen. And today, I want to share my views on how we can avoid it. So I quit my job, and I got started working on my different business ideas. But it was actually one of my side projects that ended up taking off. Before it even had a name, we got accepted into the Portland Incubator Experiment, which is one of those startup accelerators that support early stage companies with a little bit of funding and a lot of mentorship. The thought of being in the incubator was exciting, but also really scary. I knew it would be a ton of work, but I also knew that it would be a really good chance for my new company, which was a nonprofit, since this is Portland, of course, would give it a really good chance of succeeding. So, have you ever had one of those moments in life where you can feel that your life is changing? It was like that. So I went for it. Being in the incubator was awesome. I met so many cool people. They were really excited about what I was doing, super supportive. Um, I learned a ton about business. I didn't really realize how much I didn't know until I learned it. Um, it lasted about three months long, but it felt like a week. I blinked and missed an entire Portland summer, which is tragic in itself. <laughs> but I also felt like I saw my friends less and less, barely saw my husband. I never did yoga. And it really started to take a toll on my body. By the time it was over, I didn't really recognize my life. But on the other hand, I was super excited about my new company. We ended up calling it Code Scouts, and it was really starting to come together. When we were in business for about a year, we, had, we started getting people signing up in droves, really wanting to be members. We got featured in some of the local papers. We got written up in Fast Company magazine. And people were emailing us from all over the world asking when we would be opening a chapter near them. On paper, it was a huge success. But I was secretly miserable. Depressed, burnt out, physically sick, and riddled with guilt. What kind of entrepreneur is miserable when they get featured in Fast Company? I felt ridiculous. I felt crazy. So I ignored how I was actually feeling, and I kept going. About six months later is when the other shoe dropped. I went into my eye doctor to get my annual you know, eye check and new glasses prescription, and she was very concerned. She did some extra tests, and um, she was like, do your eyes hurt? I said, no, I don't think so. She's like, are you sure? 
And I thought, that's a very strange question. I'm, I don't think so. And she said, well, you have developed uh, an eye disease. It's a progressive disease, and you will eventually go blind if it's not treated. Uh, I was like, wow, huh, what do you think would have caused that? And she said, how long do you spend in front of the computer every day? And I was like, oh, I don't know, probably at least 12 hours. And she was speechless, actually. <laughs> and she kind of sighed and looked at me, and she said, um, you really need to think about finding a new career. I was devastated. This was probably my lowest point, at least in a long time. Um, and freaking out that I was about to go blind, of course, I took the treatment protocol really seriously. So um, the first week of that was essentially total eye rest. So I went home, I laid on my couch, and I got one of those eye masks, you know, the gel ones you keep in the fridge, put it on my face, laid there, cried. Um, and since I couldn't look at anything, or at least I wasn't supposed to, um, I had a lot of time to think. So I laid there and I tried to figure out how did my perfect opportunity land me here? It was a really hard week, <laughs> but it was exactly what I needed. And I realized three things about entrepreneurship that would completely change the way I think about it. So I quit my job, right? And I started a business. But I didn't quit to start a business. I quit to find more fulfillment in my life. It's the same thing we all want. But I got so wrapped up in starting a business because I thought, well, work is what you do. You quit, don't travel the world for a year. That would be a dumb idea, right? Start a business. Um, so I started a business and I got so wrapped up in that I forgot the whole reason I had quit at all. I forgot my true goal. So I realized this, and I knew I had gotten off track somewhere, but I couldn't quite put my finger on it. So then I was at dinner with a couple of my friends, and they were telling me about their new business, which is an online designer scarf boutique called Lions Abound. And my first thought was like, wow, I wonder why they're so passionate about scarves. Um, but as they explained to me, the scarves were sort of a tangential issue. The reason they were starting this business in particular is because they cared about two things, traveling, and being creative. And an online business would allow them to work from anywhere. And designing scarves was pretty creative. And I mean, who doesn't love scarves, really? So it finally dawned on me. They had figured out what they wanted in life and then designed a work that would fit into that and would get them where they wanted. As we move forward into, into becoming a nation of entrepreneurs, if we don't really think about what we each individually value and prioritize getting that into our day-to-day -day lives, we're going to be headed on the wrong path. So they told me they were starting a scarf business, and I thought, wow, I wonder why they're so passionate about scarves. Who's heard that wisdom that in order to find true happiness in life, all you have to do is follow your passion? Take the cheese. It'll be great. I had internalized this as well. Um, and that's why I was so sure that going down this road and following Code Scouts was such a great idea. But what I realized was that following your passion can really be a trap, can land you somewhere you did not expect. The project that became Code Scouts, it wasn't a business. It was never intended to be a business. It was a, a side project. All it was was a couple weekend workshops where I helped some women in my community learn the basics of computer programming. And it was fun. There's a theme in my life where when I see a problem, I solve it with a party. So practicing for this included several parties. Um, but when this fun side project became my work, when it became my full-time job, it didn't energized me the way it used to. It felt like a weight on my shoulders. I wasn't planning a party anymore. I was trying to make a paycheck. Now, I'm not saying by any means that you should start a business you hate. Nobody would want to spend the time and energy you need to build a business doing something you hate. But what I have learned is that it only takes a teaspoon 
of passion put into some work that you like to really make it feel fulfilling. Any more than that, and you end up caring so much that you can't be objective, and I'd say even a little bit selfish about how you spend your energy. And if you can't do that, there's no way you can craft and maintain for yourself a balanced life. So I'm laying on the couch, I'm crying, and I've got my eye mask on my face. And since I can't look at anything, I do a lot of thinking. And I'm pondering these existential questions of life and entrepreneurship. But it did not take very long before I started freaking out about all the stuff that wasn't getting done. Who's going to do this if I'm not doing it? Um, I had been giving my company probably 100 hours a week, maybe, um, because I had really believed that. It's the same thing a lot of entrepreneurs believe. Maybe there are some of you that feel this, too, that you have to eat, drink, sleep, breathe your business, and that is the only way you're going to get to the end. And the, what the end looks like is some big payoff. You don't even really know. You get to some big payoff where things are easier, and then maybe finally you get that flexibility you wanted when you started a business in the first place. So then I'm laying on the couch thinking, I wonder how much longer, how much more do I need to do before that big payoff is going to happen? And if I can even figure that out, like, you know, I'm laying on the couch like, well, who's going to do that, right? I, f I realized um, the payoff wasn't coming. And that was really hard. Because um, the thing is, for that big payoff to ever come, your business has to keep running. And if you get sick or burn out or throw yourself off a bridge, before that happens, I know that sounds terrible. I shouldn't joke about that. <laughs> but it can, it can really get to feel like that. And if you get to that place where that's how you feel, all of that energy is lost. It's wasted. So then what I realized was something a little bit maybe controversial. I should have started out by giving my business less. Like, you know, I should have worked part time on my startup like 40 hours a week. <laughs> um, and yeah, it would have grown more slowly for sure. But it would have learned to become more efficient. Given less, it would have evolved to be suitable. And the other thing is that it would have been more sustainable for sure, because maybe I would have actually made it to the big payoff. Ultimately, though, that big payoff may never happen at all. What I realized is that the true payoff, the only payoff you can ever count on, is the payoff of what you bring into your day-to-day -day life that creates a more fulfilling life for yourself. Thinking through my experience and um, organizing my thoughts helped me to make sense of the last 18 months. And I realized that entrepreneurship is not the magic wand I thought it would be. It's just a way of organizing your work. That's it. Working for yourself doesn't bring you happiness, it doesn't bring you riches. It doesn't bring you free time. None of that is automatic. Entrepreneurship is just a tool. All it provides is the opportunity for you to build whatever you want into your life. How you choose to do it is completely up to you. And today, what I've shared are just three guidelines for helping us use this tool better. First, remember that what you're really building is not a business. It's your life. Your work, whatever it may be, is just a means for you to get what you want out of life. Second, be super mindful about what you decide to make your full-time job. It's really, really difficult to take a passion and make it into a business. And finally, don't sacrifice too much of your health and happiness today for some big payoff tomorrow, because it's sustainability along the way that's going to get you there. The last few years for me have been a little bit rocky, um, but despite all that, I really like organizing my work as an entrepreneur. And whether you want to use this tool and work for yourself, or you'd rather work for someone else, 
it doesn't really matter. What matters is building a relationship with work that suits your lifestyle. We're in the midst of a cultural shift right now toward entrepreneurship, but actually, it's not a shift toward entrepreneurship at all. What we're looking for is a saner way of working and a more sustainable way of living. There's so much for us to gain, and regardless of what tools we want to use, let's build healthier, happier lives. That's the way we'll make a healthier, happier society. Thank you.